Gold has been under pressure as the dollar strengthens and uncertainty surrounding the next Fed decision continues. Let's bring in Barrick Gold President and CEO Mark Bristow. Barrick reporting just a short time ago, the company earning an adjusted EPS of 19 cents. That was two cents better than expected. Mark, great to speak with you. Morning. How are you? Good morning. Um, costs were up. And I'm just wondering, you know, from your standpoint, you know, from miner's standpoint, one of the biggest input costs, if not the biggest, is energy. And that has been up in the past six weeks. And so I'm wondering what your what your force what you're seeing in terms of the impact on, on your costs? So certainly the costs are, are flattening off, probably not going down yet, but certainly flattening, flattening off. And I think the positive part of everyone focusing on greenhouse gas emission and moving to greener energy is we're investing in cheaper energy overall. Okay, so you anticipate your costs to, to level off because of that. Um, what are you seeing in terms, what are you anticipating in terms of copper prices? What we saw this morning is that copper prices have moved to basically a one month low on the back of the weaker than expected China data. And China continues to be weak. We haven't seen the you know, full blown stimulus that so many investors had been hoping for out of China. And that, of course, is a major uh, consumer of copper. I think this is the dilemma that the industry faces, whether it's gold or or copper. Um, you know, when you look at all the fundamentals for copper, uh, we're going to be in short supply very, very soon. And uh, and we're still traded almost on a daily basis. You know, the, uh, the above stocks, available stocks of copper are very low. Um, you know, I think everything points to a better copper price in the future. And as miners, I think, you know, one thing I've always said, and I've been in this industry for a long time. It's a long game, and you can't manage your business on short-term events. And and I think the lower copper prices is a short short-term issue. Can you walk us through where the new demand from copper comes from? Because as you mentioned, copper moves on a day-to-day -day basis. We get you know a, a little a little sniffle out of China, and copper prices go down. Um, but <laughs> copper is really the backbone of the new green energy economy. It's needed for, for instance, solar installations and so on. Um, and so where do you think is the next big driver in terms of demand? Where is that coming from? And do tighter credit conditions make it harder for new installations and therefore copper consumption to go higher in the near term? I think, you know, uh, the big driver for copper is right now it's batteries. But batteries is not a long term solution for the future of a better planet for all. Um, what's really important is greening our grids. And we've started seeing that with big cable connections around Europe. And we've got to really take the, the, clean, the green energy or renewable energy to the industrial regions. And to do that, you need big cables. And the only way you can transport electricity is with copper. And every other aspect of uh, industrialization and development, because we'll soon work out that uh, you know we can, we, can, we can make all the cars in California uh, battery operated, but that's not us going to save our planet. The, the way to really uh, protect and and leave a better planet for future generations is to develop the underdeveloped economy. So, you know, right now we're all obsessed with uh, strategic metals, but um, but it's all about development, and all the metals are required in development. I think the key I would the key point I would leave is, you know, just as gold is precious. My view is that copper is the most strategic metal out of all the metals. Hmm. Um, gold may be precious, but it doesn't yield anything, which has always been the knock on gold, Mark. So what is your argument at this point for investing in an ounce of gold versus buying the equivalent amount in a bond that will yield you 5 percent? So, <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at bonds going back as long all the way to 1972, Gold has really outperformed uh, most of the asset classes. And right now we have a situation in the world where the, there's a question mark over, you know, whether the, the dollar will, will stand up as a reserve currency into the future. And, and it's a store of wealth. It's, uh, it's one currency politicians can't print. It's always been a go-to asset. Um, sure, it's been under pressure because of the yields uh, with the increase in interest rates on the back of inflation. But look where it's sitting at the moment. It's, you know, it's in very, you know, last quarter, Kelly, you, you, the, the, 
the average gold price for last quarter was the highest it's ever been in a quarter. So not a bad time to be a gold miner. All right, Mark, thank you. Nice to see you, Mark Bristow. Okay, thank you. coming up, uh, the challenges of making chips on American soil. Why, why is it